amazing. I'm going to go ahead and let people join on in. I'm going to invite some people. Got to let them know that we're just setting things up. Just adding a little bit more people, letting them know I'm live. Lots of friends, lots of friends. Alrighty. Hey Ed, thanks for joining. Awesome, so many friends are on right now. Boom, if you guys have any other people that you'd like to add on, it's not going to be a very, very um, long live at all. It's just going to be straight to the point, going over the book. So it's just about apostates. Um, if you know anybody else, let me know. Um, and I can invite them, or maybe you can as well. Um, yeah, it's not going to be that. It's not going to be that long. I think I even started a little, a little earlier, so I can get some more time in. Hey, Sarah. Nice to have you. Awesome. All right, cool. So here's what I'll do. I'll just start, and then whoever joins can go ahead and start from the beginning when it's up on Facebook afterwards, okay? Perfectionione. Okay, so this is the book I'm talking about, The Truth About Apostates, Scientology Story. Boom, there it is. This book right here is widely talked about throughout the world um, it's in 13 languages now if you want to get your copy it's um, free but you have to pay for the shipping that's about it it's on my website exposingcrimes.com but it doesn't have all the languages on my site so you're gonna need to go to amazon.com and um, just look up Ryan Prescott on the search search thing um, and a um, search bar and then it'll come up with all the books that I've written and you'll see all of the languages It's in 13 languages this, um, other than English <laughs> Hey Nicola Yeah, it's you know, this should be shared with everybody. I mean seriously, it's really awesome. Hey Terry Nice to have you on as well And eventually what I'll do is I'll have it to where I can sign the copy as you see, I signed this one, but I can eventually have it to where I sign the copy. We'll just, we'll get that. We'll get that soon. We'll get that going soon and we'll, we'll have that. And then the, the proceeds from those sales will also go to the project as well, like everything else. Alrighty, cool. So truth about apostates. Now, um, it's, it's got 13 chapters. Um, you can see the table of contents right there right there there we go perfect okay and then it's also got a um it's also got a glossary actually in the back yeah it's got a glossary and it's got references okay so i'm not just i'm not just making stuff up on this i got references and then there's a glossary in the back as well so um basically i did this really cool to the reader part just to introduce everybody to it right and it's um it's this is a this is a book geared towards those that might have heard some misconceptions or rumors in re, in relation or regarding the church, right? My religion, the Church of Scientology. Hi, Maria. Alrighty. So, and at the end of this, I'll have a question and answers kind of deal going on, um, so that you can ask me any questions that you have. Maybe you have somebody that you want help with. Maybe you have questions just because um, you've heard some stuff. Go ahead and let me know, and I'll totally answer it. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for joining. I'll try to wave as many people as possible. If I don't mention your name, thank you for joining anyway. You're amazing. Um, so basically, so there's to the read apart. It's right here. Boom. And it's actually a... Um, 
Yeah, it's basically one page. Okay, so it's one page. Here it is. And it's in big type so that you so that you can see it. Right here, I'm just going to position that up just a tad bit. Perfect. Okay, now before we go over anything, I do want to clear up the word apostate with you. Because when you read the title, you probably yawn or you get confused. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. It doesn't really matter. Let's clear it up one more time. Um, apostate. It's a apostate, that's how you say it, apostate, right? A disloyal person who betrays or deserts his cause or religion or political party or friend. It comes from the Greek word apostates, which also means deserter. So basically deserting your cause. Religion, um, you know, whatever you basically um, committed to, right? Cool. Hey, Nisa. Hi, Mario. Woohoo, Mario. All right, so here it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and I won't read it all, but I'll definitely show you what's some chunks in it. <laughs> God bless you too. All righty, so it says, Thank you for taking the time to read this fine book of information regarding the Church of Scientology, David Miscavige, L. Ron Hubbard, Dianetics, and the management, administration, and other aspects of Scientology. Now, this book is actually meant for an uh, introduction to the series that I wrote. So this is the first book of the series. This is like the gradient. This is the introduction gradient. Then the next book kind of gets into it a little bit more because that's about 300 pages. And then as well as the hidden agenda, which is the third one in the series, which goes into even more detail and is actually close to, I think it's even closer to 300 pages, not including the references and stuff. Um, so it says, I would like to invite you to reality. I know it may be hard to fathom that you are betrayed, but that is exactly what will have to be confronted and dealt with. So when you um, are tricked into believing something that's completely wrong, like a misconception, a rumor, a lie, whatever, um, you kind of need to kind of see that you were betrayed and kind of acknowledge that you were betrayed, right? Because you can't just continue on um, with the belief that you actually know something when you actually don't, right? I'll 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 um I'll go into that detail after after um, I go over the book Jennifer and then we'll go from there. Totally fine. All right, cool. So there are a few people leading you down a dark path of insanity, violence, deprogramming, and other such unreal practices. Each will get what is coming to them without any inter intervention. Nobody has to do anything to stop them necessarily. It will just happen, and largely due to their own efforts. So that basically, you know, this, this basically goes over what you're about to list, what you're about to read, what the person's about to read, you know, and so on and so forth, right? So we, we go into that. Um, I, I didn't read all of the, to the reader, but there's, there's more in there. When you get the book or you get the ebook or whatever, you'll get to read that. It's super great. Um, I do offer people to reach out to me um, in the book. Um, so I do say, hey, thank you, and if you, have one, if you want a legitimate discussion about the church, go ahead and just reach out to me, kind of deal, okay? Um, oh, totally, yeah, I'll go, I agree with it totally. Let me just go over that at the end, because there's a lot of information to share with that. You guys are actually asking the, the best questions. So, chapter one is basically an introduction to the apostates. Defining the word apostates will help anyone see how we arrived at the current circus of social media affairs. So you cleared it, you kind of know what it's all about. Um, you kind of go through it, that's chapter one, introduction to apostates, kind of goes over what they do. Um, it says, after looking for myself at the operations of those who are vested into the purpose of profiting off of false allegations and exaggerations toward my religion, Scientology, I decided to take it upon myself to write a few chapters for all those interested and or affected by this virus of information. This is only a high-level attempt to at least expose what's really happening behind the scenes. Throughout my apostate research, I found these people have either pretended to be Scientologists or are just employed by those who are against Scientology for what, it is, for what Scientology is doing to their business, basically 
specifically the businesses who are being affected by Scientology are the American Psychiatric Association, American Medical Association, their marijuana industry, psychiatrists, again, psychologists, religious bigots, the mainstream media, and Big Pharma. But I'm going to have you go, in, and go into that detail a little later um, in regards to that because um, these people are being exposed for what they're not doing for society, right? Scientology is helping people um, and assisting people in life all throughout the world, right? Um, you can't say that for psychologists. You can't say that for psychiatrists. Yes, they have good intentions. Yes, we need to actually clear up their intentions and um, make, it, make it so that they're not harming people and misleading people down a path that is um, harmful to them, okay? So then the next chapter goes over, so it went over to the apostates because I wanted to introduce that subject to them. And then the next part is Scientology is a success, right? So here it is, right here, boom. So Scientology is a success. Why did I write this chapter, right? I wrote this chapter because, um, you know, it's just part of a misconception that people, you know, get with new religions because they, don't don't, they don't necessarily get to see how a religion expands from where they stand on things because they don't they're not in the religion so they wouldn't understand right so I take them back to basics and I kind of get them to um, look at how it is a success and I explain to them how memberships how the membership works um, how the church works how many members there are all this other stuff right all of this other juicy information so it says the Scientology religion is an ultimate success and by golly that's why apostates go so crazy about attacking the church in fact, it is completely successful for a new religious movement for having achieved so much in such a short period of time. Every week, people check it out for themselves. The apostate stories are questioned, and people decide for themselves who is telling it straight. And I tell them about how I'm a Scientologist and how Scientology and Dynamics were founded, um, just general information so that they're not, you know, so they don't have to read, like, you know, a lot. They, they, need, they need to get it from L. Ron Hubbard. That's what that's what's happening, right? So I'm trying to get them to read it from L. Ron Hubbard in this in this chapter. Um, it kind of goes into more detail, and then I said, if you look around today, you'll find people from Fortune 500 corporations, small businesses, families, relationships, and other functions of life, and other echelons of success, using common sense Scientology principles. Why? Because these principles are the most effective tools you can find out there today. Now, you have to understand, to go into more detail about that one, um, one statement a little bit more, right? Now, this one's really cool because um, I worked really hard to get this information. Really hard. You have to understand, this is really hard. It's called apostates in the money game. Now, that's, that's what you should understand is that they're only there for the money and the fame. Um, fame meaning the popularity that they get for like 10 minutes. <laughs> But I don't go into so much, so much detail on it. Remember, it's just an introduction. So this is just an introductory book that gets into the that, that introduces you to the series that I wrote. It's the attraction of being an apostate is the fact that you can be hired and paid to tell your tales of woe and mistreatment, quote unquote. Basically, you can sell your soul for profit, and the most visible apostates are all about the money. The apostates are playing a game, and the whole purpose of the game is so that they can get the rent, bills, and expenses paid. When they also, and then they also get 10 minutes of fame from different deep swamp areas of the mainstream media. Now, this statement I'm about to say has nothing to do with politics, has nothing to do with anything else. It's just um, these outlets and what they've done, um, what they've tried to accomplish, and what they've supported. Um, specifically, CNN. ABC 2020, Australia 60 Minutes, and other lamestream media outlets who love to promote controversy and not have backup or research to attract to uh, or retract information later, right? So it's actually quite evilly genius in the sense that these people meet and go over the next plan to make another big bag of money by tricking people about my religion. It's quite interesting how many people are so easily fooled by these dark campaigns, whether politics, the state of the environment, or evils of the religion, um, supposedly religion, the apostates in the media are literally profiting millions from this scheme. The news reports on the activities of the apostates, and therefore they are not actually telling lies. That's what they're trying to put off on us. They're, not, they're trying to tell us that these apostates aren't lying, but in actual fact they are. 
Um, so then it goes over to um, it goes over to an apostate. I'm not going to say his name on this live because it would just be promoting him, and I'm not doing that. But I will tell you to read the book. Um, this chapter just goes over more and more information. I won't read all of the chapters because I just want to give you a skim and a look through of what's actually occurring and what you can show your friends. Now, the tax exempt, there's a there's one on the tax exemption, right? Um, apostates hate that um, religions have tax exempt status, right? Because it makes them um, able to help more people, and um, so they so they create you know misconceptions, lies, rumors, whatever the heck they can figure out or invent in a Mexican restaurant. I'll go into more detail about that in the exposing. Um, an escaping Leah book um, probably this Wednesday but one of the favorite claims that the apostates make is the ta about the tax exempt status of the church and they supported nonprofit campaigns and organizations of course this is easily debunked and has been proven by court testimonies affidavits and actual public statements of professionals and experts in this field over and over again which means that you know they we religions do only um, what is it, receive tax exempt status if they, you know, are legitimate religious organizations and we are one of them. Um, they use it because it promotes an emotional response from people. Hearing it for the first time, um, it can generate feelings of outrage and injustice which come, yeah, which come basically um, full swing because we always we already have to deal with this in a daily on a daily basis with the mainstream media because um, they just tag along the coattails of the chaos that's being pushed. Right now, not a lot of people know what tax exempt status is, and I will go ahead and explain it right here and right now. Tax exempt status is a monetary exemption which reduces taxable income. Examples include exemption of charitable organizations from property taxes, income taxes, veterans, and certain cross-border or multi-jurisdictional scenarios. The purpose, because charitable organizations and religions exist to help people, and it's wrong for such important work to have to, have to also pay the government, thereby reducing the grants and donations available to help people. How does one qualify for tax-exempt status as a charitable entity? The organization must be organized and operated exclusively for religious, educational, scientific, and or charitable purposes. Net earnings may not in, um, will, not, will not inure to the benefit of any private individual or shareholder. No substantial part of any of its activities may be attempting to influence legislation. The organization may not intervene in political campaigns. And the organization's purposes and activities may not be illegal or violate fundamental public policy. It's pretty simple to understand. That's in the book. Now it goes through how the church was awarded it and how it received it and so on and so forth. Let me adjust the screen because it looks like the sun's out. <laughs> So there it is. It goes over more and more and more about it in this and how the church received it. It's all documented. Even IRS statements says we have determined you are exempt from federal income tax under Section 501A of the Internal Revenue Code as an organization described in Section 501C3. So if anybody knows um, charitable organizations, they do receive that status and that is something in this book. As well as, um, you know, an, an apostate that, you know, actually stated the truth and before he, you know, deserted his cause, um, the statement while he was in the church is in the book now. So there it is. So it's in the book. You can read it. It's totally cool. It actually goes into, um, it actually contradicts what he's saying right now. And, um, and it's really funny, actually, because he goes into, it's like, how it was possible and how Mr. Miscavige actually, you know, stood up for us and made it happen, which is super great. Um, so then it goes into the team of misfits. This is the next chapter, right? This is only, this is only chapter five. We've only, we've actually touched on a lot and that was only, this book's only a hundred pages and it already touched into a lot and it's only page 16. <laughs> So now page 17 goes into the team of misfits and it looks like, yeah, I, I kind of go over the list of people you shouldn't listen to. Um, you know, com I, again, this is completely coordinated, so 
I'm not saying anything that's like too like weird, you know, but it goes into, you know, the simple truth goes into the corporations that are, you know, that are doing all of this, all of this for it. I mean, it's, it's insane. Um, the simple truth is, is these corporations, public figures, and other people paid by those who want to make a profit from bashing Scientology are all working pretty openly together. Most people don't have time to confirm or research what they hear, so they fail to see this simple arrangement of apostates creating a controversy so that they can get paid and help their employers, quote-unquote, benefit from the exposure and ratings. Pretty interesting stuff. So the fact stands that these people have already been exposed. They have many times we just need to get the information out so now we have a trilogy uh, of a series of books we can get out and expose it all in full um so the fact stands that they have they've already been exposed these corporations have been exposed for things done in the past and they're using scientology as another example of corruption and bigotry so they're just projecting it onto somebody else because they can't take responsibility and that's totally fine we're exposing that as well um, so once exposed, you'll see the families of the people who have committed crimes and violations against Scientology no longer want any association with them. So we don't want any association with um, the people that are attacking religions in general, especially Scientology, because you don't need those people on your lines and in your life. They're just horrible people. Um, no matter what they state in regards to Scientology being the cause of these family disassociations, that is just not the case. These individuals have committed crimes and violations against their family's standards of decent and responsible behavior, and not only that, but they fail to see the importance of taking responsibility for these wrongdoings. This doesn't mean taking responsibility and making things right, by the way, with the church, just the church itself, but meaning legally as well. Some of these individuals stole money, property, and knowingly lost the church millions of dollars. And parishioner donations, not okay. So we're not going to associate with people that have committed crimes, right? So then I end that chapter with a really, really cool statement. It goes over more and more information. You're going to love it. And then it goes over the donations of Scientology. Now this is a really, really cool chapter because it goes over why we do what we do. And um, what the donations go towards and um, you know the facilities and what they're used for. Now I want to keep that as a sweet spot because it's it's kind of cool. So I want you to just go ahead and um, and read through that for yourself. Um, then there's there's a thing that I actually researched. Um, it was very thoroughly, very um, very thorough what I did. It's called playing the legal system. That's what the apostates um, do. And if anybody doesn't know what apostate is, it's basically just a deserter of their cause, religion, political party, whatever. Um, so, so it says, so what do I mean by playing the legal system, quote unquote? I mean the actuality of the apostates playing the legal system. The actions and intentions of using the judge and the jury to decide on whether or not the information laid out that they made up is actually true. And it's using exactly like that. Manipulating the outcome to, the f to fan the flames of controversy for the purpose of profit. Filing fake lawsuits to report on them before they get dismissed by the judge for being completely unfounded. So without this information that we have now about these people and um, the truth, right? Without, these, without this information now known, they used to just take advantage of the legal system not knowing the truth about the church. Yes, the church had documents and all that other stuff to, to prove it, but they also needed other testimonies. And thus, this is a testimony now. This is a testimony. And also that other book, the other two books are a testimony now. Um, it goes over more. There's also court transcripts from people that... that um, that um, are exposing what's going on um, and how people are taking advantage of the legal system, which isn't cool, right? So I went ahead and um, shared how it's being exposed, which is super great. So it's not happening now. I can I can tell you that there's going to be a third edition of Escaping Leah coming out that's going to basically, you know, go into more detail about how we're winning that now, how we're winning that battle. Um, it's not cool. They're committing perjury, right? So they're going to be caught on that charge as well. So we're getting there. We're getting there. 
So then it goes over the Ideal Organization Project, right? Gives you some more juicy information about that. It's not that long. The chapter's only three pages. The reason why is because I want to show them, whoever's reading this book, that the church is expanding. And it also includes, includes a, um, a quote by L. Ron Hubbard, which is super cool. It says, one could look at this Ideal Org and know that this is, was the place a new civilization was being established for this planet, L. Ron Hubbard, which is super great. Of course, goes into more detail about that, how they're developed, um, you know, and um, and so on and so forth. Again, it goes over also Scientology, um, re quote unquote recruitment. That's just another buzzword that the media uses. We don't actually recruit. What we do is we disseminate. It goes into more detail about that. It says, let's take up how the apostates claim that there's widespread recruitment happening for the church probably hitting people over the head you know kind of it's it's pretty funny i'm just making fun of it because it's just a joke what they're trying to do mr hubbard never intended for scientology to have to go on any recruitment quote unquote phase to get new people into the religion and that's never what mr hubbard intended because it was not necessary it's always it was always intended to educate others about what scientology has to offer ensure that people that people had the correct data and that they made up their minds about it from the un, from from the true facts and not the lies and rumors people can find it out for themselves and what it offers and once they do it's pretty obvious there are benefits to learning more so the current chairman of the board mr miscavige has only continued to this vision and has brought it to reality through the ideal organizations mentioned before on each new church building well in each new church building you will find the first two floors of their facilities dedicated to bringing the truth about Scientology and Dianetics to those who are curious and who have chosen to look into it without committing to anything. The staff of these organizations see to it that the delivery of these services are very exact and very straightforward and are brought through by exact application following how Mr. Hubbard laid it out in his writings, which are now, which, which are called scriptures. Anyway, it goes into more detail. There's also two other pages I haven't read because I'm not going to read them. You're going to read them. <laughs> the next one. Now, this is a mind-blowing um, breakthrough. For the longest time, we have been kind of trying to figure out how these guys, how the apostates are able to do what they're doing and who's backing them. And, um, you know, what what is that all about? Like, why are why are they able to do this? Like... Why are they able to slime everybody? Like, one. You know, this doesn't make any sense. So I went ahead, and I did something that I'm super proud of. Super proud of. I actually found out why and how they do it. And it's actually, now, nothing to be alarmed about. This is actually a really cool thing. Of course, still coordinated. It's called, um, I won't mention it, I won't mention it on the live stream because I want you to see it for yourself and I want you to read it for yourself but I will just point out some cool little things cool little details that you should know about this entity that they use and it's literally on page 34 of the of truth about apostates right so it's it's super great super great life goes on now um, if you didn't know there's a man that recently spoke out against the apostates and of course the media muted it and you didn't hear about it he spoke he spoke out against um i won't mention his name it's in the book though he exposed what's called there's an entity it's literally against us it's actually it's it's um it's um anti it's called the anti-scientology cult they actually run a cult which is interesting right so um these these apostates are just projecting what they're doing onto us for no apparent reason well you think but they're actually this is how they create prejudice in society and this is how they get their money so they so they have an entity and it tells you all about it in here you're gonna you're gonna actually kind of freak out a little bit the fact that I was able to sniff this out in a heartbeat and put it in a book I just knew there was something up and I needed to handle it so um, yeah, it just goes into more detail about that. You're gonna you're gonna just look at it and go, whoa, what's happening here? This is this is and it, it shows you all about it. I mean, I literally go into detail about it. No joke, it's pretty good. And then of course I go into Scientology management entities. Super cool thing, super cool thing. There it is. 
um, and I go into RTC, Religious Technology Center. I go into the Church of Scientology International. I go into the different board of directors, not like fully in, in like in thorough, but I kind of just give them um, a viewpoint that they should understand when they hear about these things and so that they don't go, what's all of this about? You know, I don't want them to do that. I want them to actually have the data for themselves. So it goes over to, it also goes over the C organization, um, just, just in one, one sentence, well, basically one paragraph. Super great, goes into more detail about that. Um, goes into the flag building and what that is all about and how, um, when it was opened and how it was supported and other such things and how it is supported, where it is located and future things. Um, then there's also, you probably, you know, you probably have seen a couple of people going, hey, look, oh, you're part of the religion that has to do with Tom Cruise or John Travolta or Kirstie Alley and, you know, big names, Elizabeth Moss, and I could go on and on and on. That's not the point. But I have a whole chapter, celebrities and public relations. And, you know, what's funny is that we don't rely on the celebrities to do our public relations for us. That's just not the case. Um, the church, you know, I even I have it right here. It says apostates love to try and jump into the limelight by making outrageous claims about celebrities in Scientology. Yes, there are a fair share of artists, entertainers, celebrities, activists, and public figures who are members of Scientology, also known as Scientologists. These people were not told to come into the religion because of their status or way of life. They learned about it like anyone else. There. Are there are many public figures and celebrities that use Scientology principles and have decided not to become a Scientologist as well, but still respect it for its effectiveness and care. I could name many names, but I'm not going to do that on this live. Every week, you hear that Scientology has this celebrity and that public figure, and that these people believe in frogs and ducks and all sorts of things. Why? All I can say is welcome to Hollywood gossip. The apostates spread rumors, and the people who hear about them are people that don't know the difference between fiction and non-fiction or reality to to unreality, you know? So some prominent members you might have heard of are Tom Cruise, John Travolta, Kelly Preston, Kirstie Alley, Giovanni Ribisi, Elizabeth Moss, Isaac Hayes, Beck, the Jive Aces, so many others, right? The list can go on. That's not the point, again. Um, again, and then I go into more detail about how celebrities, how celebrities are in the church. I said celebrities are not treated any differently than you or I. That is the fact. They're not treated with this. I mean, they are, sorry about that. They are treated with the same respect that we are all treated. They do not get to run the church or receive anything beyond what Mr. Hubbard laid out as guidelines for church followers and supporters. The principles are the same for everyone. So why would Scientology change what works best? and is rep respected. So, yeah, and, and again, I go over in more detail about what celebrities' roles are and why they just are Scientologists. Then I kind of go into the public relations factor of the church. And I say recently a part of the church named Scientology Media Productions was formed to be a central point to all public relations and media needs. As part of the effort, there are film crews, photography crews, and other crews that are stationed around the country and the world to document and film every single Scientology effort, which helps everyone, regardless of anything, across 196 nations and on six continents. For example, when a new church of Scientology opens, the film crews are there and so are the photographers. They document everything that is occurring at the grand opening so as to ensure that there are no outlets falsely reporting attendance, recognitions, public speakers, activities, and services that are offered or were offered at the church at that time. So again, you can find that out. Scientology Network is on Scientology.tv. I have it in the book. Bam. All you need to do is just hand the book to, to your friend or whatever and they'll get the data for themselves. I talk more about um, Scientology Media Productions in the book just to give them more information. Now, chapter 13. I believe I only said there was 13 chapters in here because I feel like I've... There's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's 13 chapters in here. But I believe that the last one is very, very touching to me. And it's the successes of Scientology from Scientologists. It's right here. Bam. All in the book. Um, and basically it says whether you're reading this book because of your support of Scientology or you have the viewpoint of it being something other than, you know, other than what it is, why would I include a chapter on successes from its participants? 
Well, it's important for you to decide for yourself and see why people would oppose it so violently. After all, if these statements are true, what else do you know of that can deliver these types of results? Recently, I, recently what improves a person's life or helps them reach their goals better, you know, this is Scientology. There are many good activities, clubs, and organizations in the world. Even doing yoga, going to trade school, and exercising all have their benefits. But what really changes one life for the better? Many will make claims to help you but never deliver. Others will, will put you in therapy and, make, and take your money forever without any plan for a cure, quote-unquote. Or a hope for some results. Endless payments and things you should do but no results. If these people were car car mechanics, which are the people that aren't Scientologists, right, and psychiatrists and psychologists or whatever, um, they'd be run out of town quickly because of the Yelp reviews and complaints and all this other stuff, right? So they'd have very disappointed customers, and they do. So I have, so in the in the chapter, many different successes from people. You can see, see how that goes on. You're gonna like it even more. It's actually, I think this is the biggest, the largest chapter that I have. It kind of goes over, you know, everyday people. And then also it goes over the professors, professors and, um, yeah, professors and, um, professor, professor, there's professors and there's also dignitaries and other such things, right? That, um, have successes and things to, things pleasurable to say about the church. There's many people. Um, and then there's also just a, a short little chapter at the end of why I wrote the book. I'll leave that up to you so that you can go ahead and read why I wrote it and what the intention is and what the results have been. Right. And then I also put in a plug for Escaping Leah, which is super great. That's my second book. Um, now here's something I haven't shared with you guys, and that's the documents chapter in the back. So on top of the references, on top of the um, top of the references, on top of the glossary, I actually threw in documents. Okay, so I I could talk all day, right? I mean, I could I could I could write a book that's like eight million pages, and I don't want to do that. I want you to see for yourself. So what I did is I put a documents chapter in here, and I put affidavits, okay, that prove what I was stating, what I state, what I mean, my intentions, so on and so forth. And also, um, like, there's an affidavit back here from L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, take that in for a second. L. Ron Hubbard, isn't that cool? Pretty awesome, huh? So there's a, and he goes over and he, um, he, he touches on a topic that um, many people have misconceptions about. And it's actually a canceled policy from like 1968 that many apostates have went ahead and, you know, um, corrupted and misrepresented it and have been misusing it on purpose because that's their agenda. They like to make, make trouble, basically. So whatever. So he has a whole, as you can see, here it is, the affidavit from L. Ron Hubbard. Bam. I actually typed it up for you. No alterations, no nothing. And he's signed at the end, right? There's his signature. Well, there's his, there's the sign off. So there's that. I also have the, um, I also have a receipts that proves that they get paid for, for um, spreading lies about the church on, on the, um, in newspapers. If you look at that, that's um, one receipts for $10,000 about a, um, and, and that was specifically, specifically in 2009 um, for a false state, for a false story in a, in a tabloid outlet, um, about Tom Cruise and his church. Um, and then here's the, and if you didn't believe me on that one, here's his, here's his IRS, here's his IRS tax form that he put, that he had to submit to court. So here it is. I don't know if you can see it cause I think it's, it's a little sunny. Okay. Now it's down again. Here it is. You can kind of see it. It's better in the book, but there it is. There's that guy's tax form. Tells you a little bit more about it. Um, 
about his ten thousand dollar payment and 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 more right um and then now you know what's funny is that i don't normally share <laughs> i don't normally um get a kick out of this kind of stuff but i love to expose you know criminals it's just something i like to do it's spreading the truth about everybody right so um it's spreading the truth out there so that people don't fall for lies and stuff like that right so i got this i got this letter of this apostate <laughs> check this out this letter but while he while he was in the church he was um committing crimes right and wrongdoings and um he knew it so he wrote a letter to mr miscavige <laughs> isn't that funny he wrote a letter to mr miscavige confessing to his crimes so there it is and all of it and i actually went ahead and i highlighted the areas in which you should read because it's very important but you should read what he has to say about his crimes and what he did and he confessed it all and i'll have to say it's he wrote it straight to him and it actually was in his handwriting it wasn't typed it was in his handwriting i can show you it but here it is even more I think it's a two-page sucker, yeah. He signs it off and everything. Two pages, there it is. So that's all in, that's all in your hand, right here, right? All of that, that's only two, that's, what is it, only three points I've shown you so far? Then there's a, um, then from the same apostate, I actually have his, um, I actually have his um, affidavit from when he was in the church after he confessed, well, actually, no, before he confessed to his crimes, he said some really awesome things about the church from his own viewpoints under penalty of perjury in the United States. So as you can see, there it is. And I also went ahead and I highlighted in your book, when you order it, all of the areas in which you should have your attention on and read because it's, it's pretty cool. Like one of them, and it says this, he actually exposes the he actually exposes the um, the apostates in this one. He goes and this is under penalty of perjury in in the United States and in your book, right? It says it is apparent that their effort to denigrate the leader of the religion is part of a campaign to create a false impression of and thereby denigrate Scientology. The lies that have been propagated in this case are vile beyond description. Right, so basically, he goes into more detail about that, and I put it all in here. Nothing redacted. Everything's here because it's it's nothing um, unfavorable. It's very, very, very cool. It says even then they were given the opportunity to redeem themselves with the church, you know. And then it says Mr. Miscavige even helped um, these apostates before they, you know, deserted. The, before they became apostates, they were in the church, right? And he and Mr. Miscavige gave them one more chance even when scientologists would have said you know what no they don't deserve it mr miscavige gave them one more chance to see if they could do something better and they didn't do it the way you would want them to so then again there's even more the whole entire affidavit is in here i think it's about 14 pages to be honest it's really cool and then it goes into the glossary now this is a really cool glossary i spent a lot of time on this um spent a lot of time on this and basically I cleared up like what the advanced organization means right what an affidavit means what an allegation means what the A&E network is um, what the you know what the definition of an apostate is in full what applied scholastics is what an aptitude test is in general what auditing, what the definition of auditing is, you know, spiritual counseling in the church. Um, what an auditor is, you know, what, 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 um, what censorship means, what, the, what CCHR is. You know, there's so many different things. It's all in the back of your book. So you can literally take this and use it to your advantage and walk around. And when you're talking to somebody and you say, and you say some word that they probably don't even understand, you can go, Oh crap, I gave you I gave you a misunderstood word. You just take out your glossary and you go ahead and you just clear the word up with them. <laughs> it's super great. Um like the definition of Dianetics too, disgruntled, distilled, ecclesiastical, ethics officer, exposed, exteriorization, um what the flag service organization is, 
the definition of that, a definition of ideal in general. Um, inaugurate, I mean, there's so many different things. I mean, it's, it's insane. It's just packed with information for you. Packed. Packed, packed, packed. Goes into more detail about that. And then at the end, I have the references. Now I have general sites where I got some of the information from, right? General sites. But I also just credited a bunch of, you know, a bunch of good people that helped me get it, you know, helped me get this information and, um, you know, safely and securely and everything else, right? Because of course, I don't, I'm not, I'm a Scientologist. I'm a Scientologist, right? So I'm not gonna go and read, you know, stuff that has nothing to do with, you know, good things about my religion. That's just not, that's not what I'm into. I'm into exposing them, so I just expose their crimes. And this book is an introduction, and it's only a hundred and, and the printed book right here, um, it's only 102 pages. 102 pages, and it includes all of that information I just told you. All of it. I just read this book. That's all that's here on this table here, is I just read this book. So, buy it. I swear, just buy it. And if you want to get this to your friends, your family, whatever, reach out to me. I have deals to get this to you. I have deals. The reason why I, I need to have deals is because these things need to be printed, right? And they need to be advertised because it's not free to advertise this stuff. I wish it were, and that'd be awesome, but it's not free to advertise this, right? So I have to I have to pay for advertising. I have to get this stuff out. I also have a lot of different agreements with people. Um, in order to get this information out there and to help more people so um, It's gonna help it helps with that all of the purchases. They're really rock bottom If you go to exposingcrimes.com, you can get the material you can get all three books for a discounted price um, It's not that bad and it's very 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 discounted actually I could have made it more but I don't want to there's also all over Amazon, they have their own discounted prices because they, they've seen a lot of people buy my books. So you can buy the books on Amazon. Um, the, this book right here is in 13, main, 13 languages and it's all available. All 13 languages are available on Amazon right now. And this is in ebook form in all languages, it's probably except a few. I do want to see if you guys okay cool so you guys did looks like you guys asked some questions let me go ahead and just touch on the questions because this is a Q&A point now so you guys can add, ask any questions if you guys wanted to um, okay cool when when do you offer the book to people oh okay cool so yeah okay cool so here's here's what I'll do that's actually a good idea Here's what I'll do. Um, if you've purchased the book before, right, if you purchased the book or you made a contribution to getting the books translated, I'll send you a free ebook. How about that? I'll send you a free ebook of The Truth About Apostates, The Scientology Story, and um, you'll like it. I'm pretty sure you will. And if you haven't done any of that, it's totally fine. Uh, what I'll do is if you reach out to me and you buy it directly from me, not through my website, and not through Amazon, but you bought it directly from me via Facebook Messenger or email, what I'll do is I'll give you a discounted price because that just goes directly into the project's accounts so I can just go ahead and help more people and we can go ahead and push this on faster. I'll give it to you at a discounted price um, so that at least we can still keep this thing moving but we get a lot out. Um, go ahead and reach out to me. It'll be a, an amazing price. You can compare it to all the other platforms. You won't get it any other place for that much. So go ahead and let me know if you guys are interested in that. Reach out to me. My email is ryanprescott98 at gmail.com. Oh, you can also just message me on Facebook. Agree with Jennifer, how do we get how do we disseminate your book? Ebook? Yeah, so basically you can disseminate the book via paperback or ebook. I'd have to say if you got paperback, it would be awesome because you could carry these around and hand them out and there's great deals on that, great deals. Um, and then, um,
Yeah, I'm glad I could handle that, Jennifer. Yeah, I'm glad. I mean, tax exempt is an interesting topic and not a lot of people know really about it. On the IRS site, it's a little confusing, so I wanted to clear it up for people. Um, thanks, Charlie. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Keep going. Appreciate all you do to carry the torch all the years. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Jennifer, thanks so much for, for making it happen for the church. It's it's incredible what you do. It's uh, Seriously, it's incredible. Go Ryan, finish the book. Soon reading the next one. Thank you. Oh, cool. Thanks, Tamara. Appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. You're amazing. Um, This is great. Yes. Awesome. You guys are incredible. I love it. Yeah, Nicola, they never take responsibility for their crimes, and I think it's just, it's hilarious that they think that they're going to get away with what they're doing. Are you going to make the other books into e-books? Hidden Agenda, I mean. Oh, yeah, Hidden Agenda. Now, here's, here's what's funny about Hidden Agenda. That's a good question, um, Terry. Good question. So, basically, Hidden Agenda, um, I have this thing, and I want to just make this very, very clear to you guys, right? So, apostates, the attackers of the religion, right? I'm gonna, I always call them the attackers. That's the exact same, the exact same thing I'm talking about. The apostates are attackers because that's what they're doing. They're attacking us. But you have to understand is that um, when I release a book, I release it in paperback, right? I release it in paperback first. Um, Hidden Agenda should be up there soon. I'm pretty sure it's already on its way, but I will go ahead and give you more information on that as soon as it is released in live, the ebook. Um, but I do have to say is that on Amazon, if you look at my reviews, um, the favorable ones are, um, are good. They're like, they're, they're actually le legitimate and they don't have to be five star reviews. They don't need to be three star. I mean, they don't need to be like five star reviews or four star reviews for me to count them as favorable. I'm talking like the people that have actually read them and they're legitimate people, not the attackers. Cause if you look on my Amazon, you'll see there's a lot of attacks on my books, especially this one, especially the truth about apostates, because it really hits home with them. It really, it, it really um, makes them mad that I'm exposing them, which makes sense, because, I mean, if you're exposing their crimes, why would they like it? So, and then my other two books have the same thing, but the reason why I'm telling you about the reviews is because when I release an ebook, it's very easy for the apostates or the attackers to buy that ebook, leave a bad review without even reading it, and then refund it. So then therefore I have like 800 bad reviews, and then, and then I got like 800 bad reviews, right? And it's not even like they even read the book, because they, they couldn't have. It literally was bought like an hour ago. They didn't read the book, right? And I mean, they just had it so that the algorithm would know that they bought the book, quote unquote. Then they leave a bad review and then they refund the book. So then Amazon goes, what? And then so then they believe it's actually a good review. It's a legitimate review, but it's not. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Nicola. But I wanted to explain that because they're not bad books. If you read the books, they're not bad. If you read um, the reviews, they're not bad. I've had a lot of people read the reviews um, and then read the book afterwards. And they go, what happened with those you know, couple people that think the the book's bad. It's not bad. So of course, um, they're just they're just they're just scared because we're exposing their crimes. So I guess if there's someone you know who has false data or needs information, you go give the person. Yes, yes. Yeah. So basically, um, good question, Nicola. So here here's here's what I'll have to say on that. And um, what I'll say on that is. Yeah, if somebody comes up to you and says something weird or when you're out there helping helping the church, right? Volunteer ministering or, um, you know, just helping them, helping them with a humanitarian campaign, maybe even trying to invite people into the church. When you're doing that, what normally occurs is that um, people will say something or they'll say a remark or whatever. I was actually on staff at a church for about seven years. Um, I've invited people into the church all the time. I actually saw a lot of people who said weird stuff about the church, and I'd always ha I'd always like talk to them about it. And eventually, they're like, "That's actually, I'm sorry. I thought I thought that was the truth, you know, kind of thing." But I would have to say that if you walk through and you see somebody that says something while they're passing a the church or whatever, if you have time, take this book, take this book, walk up to them, and a and answer their questions. 
that's all they want. They just want their questions answered, and they're afraid to ask because they've heard so much weird stuff. You just need to get it out of their system. <laughs> so this book explains it all. Okay. Um, hopefully I answered that question. If you have any more questions, Nicola, do message me. I love messages too. Yeah, thank you, Terry. <laughs> How about making it available to us direct? I totally understand. Yeah, about the about the ebook. Um, that's the reason why I'm trying to make. So I, that the first phase was to make this available on my website, and I did that. Right? I did all three in paperback. My friend Paul Marvenko. I don't know if you know him, but he made the he made the website. Right? And he's doing a great job. I love him. He's just an amazing dude. But what I'll do is that's actually one of the next phases, and we'll put that in the um, we'll put the ebook in the website so it can be bought and purchased and disseminated completely. Um, that is actually one of my next phases. I also have translations going on right now for Escaping Leah. <laughs> Woohoo! I'm so excited. So I have I have um, Spanish almost done on Escaping Leah, which is insane because it's almost a 250 to 275 page book. <laughs> it's insane. Um, I'll do more about that later. Um, yeah, it's a really good website. It's just very, very clean. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. No problem, Nicola. I really do appreciate you guys. Really do. If you guys have any more questions, let me know. You guys can e you guys can email me. You guys can message me at any time, any way, any place. Um, I'll definitely do. Some, I'll be doing some lives very, very soon. Yeah, ebook on website. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I can also send you the ebook if you buy it directly from me. On um, I can send you all ebooks if you buy it directly from me in Messenger, and I can send you a licensed PDF where I can go ahead and license it to you for like ten times or fifteen times or whatever, whatever whatever the case may be, and we'll work that out. Um, just go ahead and message me, um, and I'll definitely work that out with you. I've done that many many times before. I have a lot of friends who have done that. And they're out there doing that. That's why. That's why you see, in the um, on my on my Facebook, why people are helping people, and they send me the reviews or the the communication cycles that they have or whatever. I post them up there so that you can see the successes of what's happening. That's normally what they use. Is they use their phone, their iPad, maybe even they have a book in their hand, and they're just using the they're using it all, you know, whatever. Bam, yeah, PDF, definitely, yeah. So you just go ahead and email me or message me or whatever, and we'll work that out. I do want to help. Anyways, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for joining on in. I think Wednesday or Thursday I'll have an overview of Escaping Leah, right? Escaping Leah will be next on the overview, and I think Sunday I'll do Hidden Agenda. Um, great idea on many of my friends' part for, uh, for um, suggesting I do these things. But other than that, I do appreciate you guys, um, you know, coming on together and um, asking me questions and listening to what was in the book. And I do hope everybody receives or gets their copy at exposingcrimes.com. Again, that's exposingcrimes.com. It's a very clean website, very discounted too. And it'll just get you those books immediately. If you need an ebook, reach out to me. I'll definitely get you that in PDF form and uh, for the time for the, in the meantime, until the website does release that. Then if you guys speak another language that I don't speak because, you know, I need to eventually do that because I swear, I really do want to speak like, I want to be bilingual. I want to be like, I want to speak a lot of languages actually. But um, in the meantime of that, do go to Amazon.com. Look up my name, Ryan Prescott, on the search box. Click enter. You'll see all of the books there. You can go. Ahead and, you probably can go ahead and click my name on Amazon, and you see my author page. It's an official author page, and go ahead and um, check out all of the languages that I have. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Alrighty, cool. Love you guys a lot. Do appreciate you guys and respect you guys a lot. Share the video with your friends, family, whatever. Make it happen. Okay, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.